so so what the the processor that we're going to or the component that we're going to use for converting UART to USB is this microchip processor called the MCP2200 um, a simple search on digikey or any uh, component retailer and I searched for USB to UART and there are various chips and this was just the one that I selected from ran uh, randomly uh, it doesn't matter what chip you select the goal is to basically convert our USB so that we can plug it into our laptop and UART so that we can communicate with the microcontroller all right so when you generally when you go to the manufacturer's website you will also see uh, the products um, such as the development kits or development board that they would have made which uses this particular chip and that is exactly uh, what I did I went to and saw the development board which was somewhere around here the demo board users guide and it will tell you how they design their particular development board and you can get an idea of how you want to design your development board and then from there they'll also give you the schematic and you can take this as a reference in order for you to design your own development board and that's generally the process of designing anything uh, whether you're designing a microcontroller a processor a component the manufacturer generally will give you some reference material that you could use in order to continue with the design so what we have over here is uh, what I've designed right now is the USB to UART so this is the processor that we're using or sorry the component that we're using um, this is an oscillator and I've got a lot of the parameters and the component the, or the peripheral components that are needed in order for this component to work uh, from the reference design which is a which is a working design so getting ideas or using that as a reference material is the right thing to do and the only thing that I've done is minimize their design into something that I would want because in their design they are uh, converting it into an RS-232 uh, pin and I just want to basically uh, design it based on the USB to uh, UART pin uh, board that I already have but I just wanted to make one and that that is made in-house basically so this is the USB to UART component this is the USB input which is uh, you have uh, some ESD protection and these are all the headers where you can communicate with the outside world kind of a thing these are the LEDs uh, which can give you some indication when data is going in and data is coming out so which is transmission transmitting or receiving so this is the schematic it's very simple and let's go to the PCB right now so what I'm going to do is um, shelf the polygon and and I, what I'm going to do is have the schematic uh, side by side and let's bring the zero so we can see both all right all right here we go so we can make put this in the center yeah now it'll be good and then we have the schematic so the main chip over here this is this main component uh, this is the oscillator this is the USB input these are the LEDs as you can see so it's a very simple design few resistors to limit current and then you have header one which are uh, which you can connect to the different GPIO so this particular component has multiple features it does not just con uh, convert USB to uh, UART signals but it also has its own general purpose input output and since it's available why not create a create a header so that in case you know there's a need to you know use those GPIO pins uh, we can conveniently connect you know wire and use them and this is uh, where the USB uh, so this is where the UART transmission and receive header would be uh, would be placed all right so what I'll do is I'll take this into 3d to show you how the board might look before we send it for fabrication 
So it's very similar to what I have. The USB directly plugs into the laptop. And underneath is where we have the readings and it'll tell you that these are the GPIO pins of the component and here is where we have the uh, you know the receive and the transmitting of the tra receiving and transmitting pins for communicating between the MCU and USB so it's a very simple design um, very simple component and that's how it goes so <coughs> Now the layout could be optimized, but the goal is to really get something working as quickly as possible, fabricate the component and uh, solder it. So let's get the bill of material and I'll show you what we have. So they're literally just 10 components. I will export this into, um, uh, I think there's even CSV of this. So we click OK. Um, so we have so in DigiKey, what I would do is um, try to import my components. Load. Select the UART to USB. And this is the footprint. So this is, uh, we don't need this. This is what we need. So this is the manufacturer part number. Uh, click. Yep, so as you can see, most of the items are not available. Duplicate manufacturer, these contacts, you can. So sometimes there are these errors which are just to confirm whether you want um, a lot more quantity, that is a tape and reel, or you want them to cut the tape based on the number of quantities you want um, and generally when you go for a tape and reel there is a minimum quantity that you need to order so here i'm just ordering one i just click add click add now i'm just ordering one 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 and then i can multiply it by a factor and just do for checkout And here, I can just do this as well. So let's search for this part number directly. Um, and then the lit LTS. I delete that component so what is so the components that I'm missing is the PRT and the LTS this is the LEDs so all right here we go here we go and it doesn't matter if the LED I don't need this specific LED so when we go to DigiKey, it might prompt us to select any LED or um, something similar. And this will be the process when buying and procuring components is some, yeah, my cat is on the table, so pardon me. So this no product is no longer manufactured and it'll give you similar products, which is fine. You know, it doesn't matter. It'll have the same footprint. And here we can order, you know, even if you order 10 or 100, it's quite reasonable. Okay. 
the price drastically drops when you order more components. So, and if you want to make, most likely an LED is easy to, um, use in other, in other products. So having more of them, because it's an indication, it's an indicator for, you know, for making sure the power is on, whether data is being transmitted. So it's a nice way to, you know, visually see if something is working. So and there we have it. So what we're gonna do right now is generate the Gerber files. So we're gonna basically add the polygons uh, generate the Gerber files. So that's what I just showed you is how we take the components, put them to the manufacturing, run to the retailer website and generate the components and see the cost and, and procure them. And in the meanwhile, we need to fabricate our PCB. So we're gonna go to do this, repo all. Uh, we'll do a last check if there's any errors. So we don't have any major errors um, and let's go to, so sometimes people use, in my case I'm just using say jail CPCB uh, and what we'll do is we'll generate the fabrication output. File, fabrication output, Gerber files. Uh, doesn't matter the layers that you need. I'll just put all layers. Click OK. This is a two layer PCB. There's just a top layer and a bottom layer. And there are a few polygons for a ground plane and few, um, and I think there's two power planes connected to um, VDD. All right. So this is done. Then we'll just create the, um, we don't need to save this. Uh, We'll create the NC drill files because there are a few wire. So fabrication output, NC drill file. Let's put it in millimeters and click OK. Click OK. And click OK. All right. And these are all the files that is generated. So what I generally do is um, right click everything so these are all generated and uh, whoops uh, yeah and add to project USB to UART that's the name of the project and this file is what you can upload to say for example a lot of online PCB manufacturer it does not it does not need to be, need to be high quality as such so what we do is just go to add Gerber file I prefer to work with um, an actual PCB than a breakout, than working on, say, your own boards. Primarily, it's more cleaner. You won't have connection issues. Uh, and if there's a problem, it's most likely with the design. So it's easy to troubleshoot. It just makes it for sim simpler and easier debugging rather than soldering every wire and component, which is also, um, easier and possible to do but it's not scalable um, sometimes I would need you know multiple USB UARTs for communicating with different types of processors and microcontrollers so this would be very handy so as you can see I don't know it costs around it's pretty cheap that's 25 millimeters by 35 millimeters and get this in blue um, I don't know what if we get some 10 quantities so I generally would go for the minimum quantity to make sure that there's no technical bugs in here and if there is for example if a, if a wire is not connected properly or a connection is not if it's a schematic error that I might have overlooked so it's always good to go for the minimum amount of quantity uh, test it it's two bucks uh, with shipping uh, I don't need a stencil 
um, I can just use the default for the most part um, and yeah and let's go to save the card so this is part one of the video uh, and then you can check secure checkout so this is part one of the video um, in part two of the videos once I get the breadboard uh, once I get the PCB we will solder all the components and then we'll test it out um, and yeah and that's pretty much what's in for this video and if you enjoyed you can subscribe